begin a new series of messages today. Jesus, the only way. Part one of Jesus, the only way. How many know that Jesus is the only way? You go to this church, that's one thing that you should know by now. <laughs> that there is no other way. We do not agree with the world's philosophy. Where they say there are many ways to God, many roads, many paths. Everybody has their own path. But it leads to this one God, so we all end up in the same place. That's the lie of the devil. The Bible is clear that Jesus is the only way. Amen. God in his infinite wisdom decided before the foundation of the world to make Jesus the only way of salvation. <laughs> Eons before God created the earth, the sun, the moon, and the stars, all of the planets in the solar system, God saw Jesus already slain at the perfect sinless sacrifice for the sins of mankind before the world or man were ever created. Amen. Amen. The way of salvation was already determined ages before Adam sinned in the garden. Amen. So God was not caught by surprise right. <laughs> when Adam and Eve sinned. He didn't have to put a plan in motion. He already knew that they would sin and contaminate everything. And he already had a plan. Everybody who would be born into the world after Adam, they would be contaminated with sin. Enter Jesus. Somebody say, enter Jesus. Uh-huh. Jesus is the only way because God the Father made it that way. Amen. <laughs> we don't have to go through a whole lot of deep rigor more trying to explain why is it that way? Because God made it that way. Amen. Father God made Jesus the only way. Amen. Jesus said in St. John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said no one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is the way to the Father, God. Because he is the truth of God, he is the life of God. He is the only way. Amen. You got to go through him to get to God. Amen. That message cannot be preached enough in 2022. Amen. In this age that we live in. Amen. Because you hear this thing everywhere about many paths and many ways to God. You hear it all the time on TV, at award shows, and on different shows and programs. And as you've heard me say in times past, Oprah Winfrey is a big fan of many ways or paths to God. She promotes that big time. And a lot of Christians hang out with them, kind of compromise. But there is no compromise with this. You cannot compromise with Jesus. Because this is exclusive. Somebody say this is exclusive. Jesus is the only way. He's the only means by which sinful man can approach 
a holy God, God the Father. He's the only way. Notice, not a way. If you watch some of the videos on YouTube of Oprah, I really hate to keep mentioning her name, but she's one of the main leaders of this. She says, he's a way. And at the same time, she says, I'm a Christian. No, you're not. Because he's the only way, not a way. The way, which is emphatic. It means one, the one and only way. That's who Jesus is. This is what separates Christianity from all other religions. The God of the Bible does not recognize or accept any other way to salvation other than through Jesus. No matter what anyone says, he's the only way. Those who believe that there are more ways than Jesus those people are not saved. And they don't know God, period. And I ain't afraid to say it. Because if you deny what scripture says, well, you deny him. When Jesus said he was the only way, that totally eliminated all of the ways that people would come up with. To try to get to God. There are no other options. Only Jesus. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate. Or the straight gate some versions say. Notice he didn't say gates. Plural. He said, gate, singular. Yes. Which means only one. Yes. Entered by the narrow gate, the straight gate. Okay. He says, for broad or wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leads to destruction. Yes. Yes. And there are many, okay. not a few, a bunch. He said there are many. Somebody say many. Many. Who go in by it. So the wide gate is broad. That's where everything goes. And it's got a lot of people on it. They like traveling on Broadway. I'm not talking down about down the street there, over by 10th Street, Broadway. Not that Broadway. The Broadway is the hell way. Because it leads to destruction. If you are on Broadway today, <laughs> get off Broadway. Get on straight way. Now it's amazing that that road is jam packed. It's crowded. People love Broadway. They stumbling over one another on Broadway. <laughs> they love. Broadway, that, that wide gate. Yes. Anything goes. I can do what I want. Right. I can do what I feel. Right. Uh, uh, my emotions can run wild on Broadway. Right. If it feels good, do it, do it, do it, do it good. I 
I mean, you can rock your way on Broadway. There are no limitations here. The sky is the limit. Whatever my mind can think of, I can do it when I look on Broadway. And that's why people love Broadway, because, hey, they can party and live it up and do what they want to do. Accept anything. Scripture doesn't matter on Broadway. All kinds of philosophies, ideologies, my thoughts, follow my heart on Broadway. Well, you're not supposed to follow your heart, you're supposed to follow the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But Broadway is it's the right name because it's broad. Your thinking can be broad on Broadway. It's popular. That's the celebrity road. Hollywood loves Broadway. But that's not the way to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of room to do what you want to do on the wide road. Any old thing goes through that wide gate. Notice, anything goes through there. The narrow gate. Can't know anything go through there because it's now. You got to shrink down. You got to leave some stuff off because it's narrow. Not only is it narrow, but it's straight. It's not crooked. It's not a winding road. It doesn't just go all kinds of ways. It's narrow and it's straight. St. John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus says, I am the door, not a door. He says, I am the door, which means the one and only door. And notice, that is singular too, not plural. He didn't say, he is a door out of many doors, like some of the celebrities say. Jesus is a way out of many ways. That's a lie. He says, the way, he says, the door, right here. Only one door and no more. Somebody say, one door and no more. Don't look for no other door, because there's only one. So Jesus, Jesus, he carefully points out the exclusive nature of salvation by saying he is the door and the way. That is exclusive. It's complete. Salvation in Jesus is complete. It's exclusive. We can't add no other stuff in this. This is not a gumbo. Well, you can just throw anything in there. No, no, no. Jesus is Jesus only. Amen. Jesus and Jesus alone is the only connection. Somebody say connection. Yes. To God the Father. Yes. And you see, it doesn't matter who disagrees with that. The truth still remains. He is the only connection. Yes. Amen. Do you have the connection today? And so what if this wicked world calls the narrow way narrow-mindedness? 
That's a popular word now. Oh, that's narrow-mindedness. You're narrow-minded. But narrow-mindedness is the only way to heaven. On the narrow road. So thank God if I'm narrow-minded, I'm going to stay narrow-minded on the narrow way. So that's a compliment, not a put down, but they think it is. Don't ever let this wicked culture broaden your mind, which will put you on the broad road to lead you to the wide gate of destruction where it is jam-packed with all kinds of people on their way to the lake of fire. Because that's exactly where it leads to. The lake of fire. Two roads in life. There are no other roads. And that's the straight and the narrow, the broad and the wide. And everybody, everybody who's alive on this earth today is either on the straight and narrow or they are on the broad and the wide. There is no middle ground. There is no side road. There is no exit road. There is no other highway that you can create. No, no, the ways have been created. God created it. And it's narrow, straight, or it's broad and wide, the gate. And guess what? He's so good, he's not gonna make a person get on the right road. You get to choose the road you want to travel on. <laughs> so everybody who's on the broad road going through the wide gate, they want to be there. When they, when they have the knowledge of there's two roads and two ways and they choose the broad road, that's the one they want to travel on. Why? Because I don't have to listen to this Bible on Broadway. I don't have to listen to what God says on Broadway. I am my own God. I make my own decisions. I do what I want to do because this is my life. Wrong is not your life. And we saw this last week in the other series. Everybody is going to have to answer to God and give an account for the life that they lived down here that God up there gave them. Amen. And when standing before him, everybody will suddenly discover, oh, that wasn't my life after all. And he gave it to you to live for him. Amen in this place. And this is the message that the world needs to hear today. Amen. Why everybody's playing tiddlywinks and talking about how to get rich and all of this stuff. Best life now. No, the best life is yet to come. No, thinking about the here and now. Well, why are you here? You're supposed to occupy until it comes. But look, we, we're not looking to stay here. And so many people have lost focus of what they ought to be focusing on. And that's on Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the only way. This is, we got Easter coming up, the Resurrection Sunday. I'd rather say that because they turn Easter into everything. Easter egg hunts and the Easter bunny and all of this other stuff. It's amazing how Satan want to take away from Jesus. 
Take the focus off of Jesus on Christmas. Take the focus off of Jesus on what we call Easter or Resurrection Sunday. And put it on all these other things. Except for Jesus. The one who hung, bled, and died and rose after the third day and sent it back to heaven and he's soon to come again. The focal point is Jesus. Oh, I mean to keep it simple and plain. Jesus. Jesus. This is why he came. I want you to think about this a minute. It doesn't make sense for Jesus to wrap himself in flesh, leave perfect heaven, come down to a sinful, wicked environment, and live among sinful men for 33 years, and die on a horrible cross, a horrible death on the cross, only to allow there to be many ways a rose to get into God's holy heaven. It doesn't make sense to go through all of that only to allow people to get there any way they want to get there. <laughs> that means he came for nothing. Just stay up there, don't come down and die for the sins of mankind. Why? I can get there any other way. Don't go through all of that, Jesus. Don't suffer, hang, hang on a cross, and bleed and die, and be buried in the grave. Go through all of that to, to allow people to say, yeah, I, get the, I don't have to go that way. Yeah, he did all of that, but I, uh, hey, I, I can worship Buddha. I, I, I can, Muhammad. Allah. I can meditate, zen, transcendental meditation. Oh, the tree is God. I'm new age, I'm a humanist. All of these other ways to wind up in heaven. And he did what he did. That makes no sense at all. But guess what? He didn't die for nothing. Amen. <laughs> he died to save men from their sins. And everybody needs saving. You and I need his saving grace. Amen. The world needs his saving grace. Amen. Especially in times like this. Yeah. No other man has ever volunteered or declared to die for the sins of the world in order to save those who would accept and believe in him before salvation. No other man. He's one of a kind. He's unique. Never ever has there been a man like Jesus. Amen. There will never ever be a man like Jesus. Amen. Both human and divine. Yes. Jesus the God man. Yes. God and man. Uh, Think about it a minute. Yes. He had to be God in order to pay for the sins of the world because only God is perfect. And there had to be the perfect sin of sacrifice on that cross. But then he had to be a man at the same time while being God because only a man can die. God can't die. Oh, that's good. So in order to be a substitute, a propitiation, to stand in the gap, to be the man in the middle, I got to become one of them. So I'll put on the flesh. 
I'll take upon me an earth suit and be just like one of them. But I will be sinless because I'm God. Nobody could do that but God. See the extent that God went through in order to save you from hell, an eternal lake of fire. And this is a message that needs to go out. Jesus, the God man, human and divine. Hallelujah. He's man, and the reason why he's man, he got hungry because he was a man. But the reason why he could feed 5,000 <laughs> with the fish and the loaves because he's God. Jesus got tired, he got sleepy because he was a man and you'll find him asleep on the boat. The Bible says, laying on a pillow. But the God woke up, speaks to the storm. See, he's God and man. Not only that, but he can speak to Lazarus and wake him up. Because he's God. And then after three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, he is risen from the dead because he's God. He gets up from the big sleep. Death. He rose with all power in his hand. Because that's the God. Hallelujah. He's not just a mere man. He's not just a good prophet. Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus is God. Jesus is God. So there's never been another man like him. Never a man like Jesus. The greatest man that has ever lived. People need Jesus and they just don't know it. This is why people will go on a lifelong quest looking in all the wrong places for the right thing. Looking for Jesus. He, he, he's not in relationships. You won't find it in another man or another woman. If I could just get this, get in a relationship with her or with him, that satisfaction guarantee. Acts every married couple in here. Now you may love your mate, be satisfied with them, but. They ain't Jesus. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your mate will make you mad <laughs> and make you want to walk out the door. <laughs> don't, don't act like it. <laughs> and some of you have walked out the door. <laughs> But Jesus won't do that to you. Amen. Now, if somebody, if they walk out the door, that they call Jesus done something. That's right. That's right. Because right. he does no wrong. Amen. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody. So people look for him and, and prestige and accolades in uh, positions and in money in material things and some look for him in drugs and some look for him in alcohol and so many things people go after looking for satisfaction and they will not find satisfaction or fulfillment because we were created for God Amen. Amen. Serve him for his good pleasure. 
the Bible lets us know his good pleasure. And as they have said, and you've heard it said, that actually God has created everyone with this vacuum on the inside of them. That only he can feel a God-shaped vacuum. Amen. That only he can feel. But people spend their lives trying to fill it with many lovers. Mm. They try to fill that with uh, the other things that are already named. Only to find out that that chasm, that hole, still remains in their soul. Why? Because only Jesus can fill that hole. Amen. You got a hole in your soul that only Jesus can fill. Amen. 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 And it won't be filled until you get Jesus in there. Amen. So then people spend their whole lives searching and seeking and wandering and groping to no avail. So people need Jesus. And they just don't know it. God put everyone on this planet to seek him. But you know what? He didn't leave us in the dark. He sent Jesus and made him to be the way, the gate, the road to get on in order to find him. So when you seek, you will find. But you got to come through Jesus, who is the only way. You got to come through him. You've got to have an encounter with the King of Glory. King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I think there might be a few people in there that had that encounter. Amen. I have. I'll testify to that. I have. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 17, verse 26 and 27 basically says God placed people in specific places at specific times in history so that they would seek him and reach out for him, rope for him, to find him though he is not far. Right. Amen. He's not that far. That's right. If people would only wake up and seek him, if you seek him, you'll find him. Amen. Amen. Oh yeah, I'm a living witness. Oh, yeah. Some of you know that. Yeah. If you seek him, I mean really seek him. Amen. You got to know what it means to seek. Right. Have you ever lost your keys in the house? Yes. <laughs> you tearing up the whole house in order to find those keys. Yes. You turning over, over all kinds of stuff. Your husband or your wife said, uh, uh, calm down, will you? No, you don't care, you messing everything up. And not fixing it until you find. That's seeking. Oh, that's going after something. It is. I mean, your heart's in it, you, you, you're passionate, your blood pressure in the earth, because you're kind of mad. And you want to say the wrong thing. You want to call them keys all kind of names. Because they done got lost. Right. Well, no, you misplaced them. Right. You did that. Right. They can't walk. You put them in that place wherever they are. <laughs> but you're seeking and seeking and searching and seeking and digging and overturning things. Well, how come folk don't do that when they're seeking Jesus? 
you seek him like that, God is not going to hide from you. Amen. He's going to reveal himself to you. Amen. When you want him with all your heart, when you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what it means to seek. It says, he is not far. He's only a stone's throw away. The saying goes. He's just a stone's throw away. You're not that far. But people got to be willing to see. That's right. This is the message that needs to go forth in 2022. Amen. Not only from where I'm standing, but this is the message that every believer needs to be out in the street telling, proclaiming this message to everybody they run into that don't know Jesus. Letting him know. Letting them know that they need him. The answer to their problems is Jesus. And Jesus alone. He is the antidote for all those troubles and all those things that a person is going through. Amen. Amen. Jesus and Jesus alone. So this is the gospel. And this is what we got to stay. We, can, we, can't, we can't make this thing difficult. We got to make it simple. The message is simple. But you know what? I used to say this, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> Being saved, getting saved is A, B, C. I understand that saying. But you know what? The road to life is really hard. Jesus even kind of made that clear. But there's not many on that road. Amen. He says, on the narrow road, the straight way, few find this road. <gasps> what? Many on the broad road go into hell. But going to heaven, just a few on this road, Jesus said. Hmm. That's something to think about. Because there are many people who go to church who think they are on the straight and narrow, and they are not. They are on the broad road. And that's kind of convicting in it all to Make sure that you are on the straight way. Amen. And you're going through the straight gate. Because there will be many people who went to church, millions, who will be standing in line getting ready to get tossed into the lake of fire on judgment day. So, going to church means nothing if your heart, if you have not been converted. Amen. It's about being converted, being born again. And this is where it starts, repentance. Amen. Preach the gospel, preacher. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'll talk to myself. It starts with repentance. That's what Peter said on the day of Pentecost. Repent! That's the first criteria. Folk don't want to do that. I don't know, just let me 
just let me say a few words and pray a little quick, sweet, pretty, nicety prayer. And I'm in. <laughs> well, no, commitment comes behind that prayer if you pray that prayer. And you better make sure that conversion really happened. And you better make sure that you're trusting in Jesus and the finished work of the cross. Amen. Some people try to jump into this thing and they have not even heard the gospel yet. Right. Right. They've not heard the message. They, they, they don't know what to believe. They're just saying some words. When they got to know the story, the gospel. What Jesus did on Calvary 2,000 years ago. They need to know that and they need to understand it. Amen. And then they need to believe it and receive the gospel. Amen. Because he said, believe on him. Believe in him. All through the New Testament, it's a, Jesus is, he's making it clear. Believe on the Son of God. Son of man. Believe on me. Believe in me. Me. Me, me, Jesus. That's what a person has to believe in. Got to receive the gospel. Hear it and believe it. And guess what? God supernaturally imparts life to the heart of that believer. He breathes on that dead heart spirit. And it comes to life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, new creature. All things pass away. You become a new you. All things become made new. You become a brand new you. You're not the same. So when a person really, really gets saved, if they try to do the same things that they were doing before they got saved, they won't be able to do the same things the same way. Because right. something happens. Right. Amen. Amen. I did this, but I don't feel good about it. I used to do this and go whistling Dixie <laughs> about my merry way. I can't do that now. I'm painting on the inside. This is torturing me. Right, right. Something's stabbing me in my spirit. I'm bothered by this. I'm grieved on the inside. Why? Because the Holy Spirit grieved on the inside of you. Yes, Why? Because he hates sin. Amen. And where sin is, he is not. So what people need is Jesus. Amen. They need to be born again. Amen. They need the life of God. So if you're here today, as I close. There's more, much more to say. But I'll say before another day. Make sure you trust in Jesus. Amen. Make sure you've trusted in him and finished work of God. Make sure you've given your life to him. Make sure that you're on the straight and narrow. And not on the broad road. And you know what? We have a day where a lot of people that we know have actually left the straight down if they were ever on there. And they were looking over there all the Man, dude, they having fun over there. And they jumped ship. They got a detour, they went exit, they jumped over the medium, they went and got on Broadway. 
I got to have some fun. I've been following Jesus too long and living a holy, righteous life. Uh-uh. I got to have some sin in my life. So I got to party and have fun. Yeah, the broad road is fun. The broad road is a blast that won't last. But many have forsaken straight now because it's calling some sacrifice. Yeah, the brother said it holiness, righteousness, commitment, loyalty to Jesus, not the world and the flesh and the devil. You let go of those things and you grab hold of Jesus' unchanging hand. Oh, glory to God. Amen. This is the truth of the God. This is pure. And this is what, this is what the world needs. Every man, woman, girl, and boy. Jesus is the only way.